Hello there and welcome. This is Mikhail or Michael speaking. And as always, before the video starts, I want to express my eternal gratitude towards those who decided to support me financially, be it through Patreon, PayPal or Super Thanks. I really appreciate your generosity. So thank you friends and have a blessed day. Today's video I will start with the Zaporozhian front and to be more specific, general Orihev direction. First let's discuss the situation within and around villages of Rabotina and Nova Prokopivka. In the last 24 hours Ukrainians continuously assaulted Russian positions located outside of Novoprokopivka from the north as well as to the northeast in attempt to penetrate Russian defensive lines and enter the village itself. Those assaults were mostly consisted of infantry due to the fact that Ukrainians had lost way too many armed pieces fighting on this axis. Although usually these tactics occasionally work, this day was not a good day for the Ukrainian assault units. As they moved in the general direction of Novoprokopivka, they were easily spotted by the Russian recon groups and came under heavy fire by Russian automatic grenade launcher. Now before I am going to review the video, which obviously will be censored due to the violent nature of it, I want to quickly say that one of my recent videos where I blurred out all the violence still got demonetized and this is one of the reasons why I continuously advertise my Patreon because at any point, absolutely randomly, I can lose income, which will greatly hurt my financial situation. So for those who want to support me financially and watch my videos uncensored, please consider joining Patreon. So the video itself starts with the bombardment of Ukrainian troops that had taken positions, as report suggests, in front of Novoparkopovka in attempt to storm it. In the video, you can see how closely and tightly the grenades are falling and you can also see the end result. After this, Ukrainians quickly realize that they have been spotted and start to slowly retreat. Several of the soldiers, as you can see on the video, Video wounded. Then they spread out in attempt to decrease the amount of losses taken by Russian fire. While medics tend to their wounds, most of the force that you have already seen on the video slowly retreats. Like I continuously say, this is one of the reasons why Ukrainian gains are so small in this particular areas. Russians have full fire control of the village of Rabotina and its surrounding areas and have no trouble spotting and opening fire on advancing Ukrainian troops. The fighting also continued in the general direction of Russian controlled village of Kampani. But again, these attacks were mostly consisted of infantry and were of very limited number. And generally at this point in time, the fighting in this area is of positional style warfare. When it comes to the settlement of Verbova, Ukrainians continue to attack in the direction of Verbova by using this road and the trench line located near it in attempt to yet again re-enter Verbova and try and entrench themselves within it. However, Russian artillery continues to strike upon Ukrainians within these defensive lines, not allowing them to advance and attack effectively. If we go to a topographic map, we can see that the settlement of Novoprokopivka is located on the tactical heights, while the settlement of Verbova is located in the lowlands, with Russians controlling tactical heights right behind it and to its flank. By the way, this is the road that leads in the direction of Verbova, which like I said previously is under full fire control by the Russians. So this is the two options Ukrainians have on this front, Novoprokopivka that is located on the heights and would be much harder to capture or village of Verbova which is located in the lowlands which is also the problem. This topographical map also shows why Ukrainians had such a hard time capturing Rabotina and already have a lot of problems capturing Novoprokopivka. As you can see both of them are on the tactical heights. Then from here let's quickly move to the Vremivka tactical bridgehead and discuss the situation here. There were reports of limited Ukrainian assaults in the direction of Zavetna Pazhanya, however they were unsuccessful. Ukrainians also attacked in the direction of Priyutne and heavily shelled the settlement and Russian positions within it, however were unsuccessful in that endeavor. Their attacks from Novodarevka and Rivnopol were also unsuccessful. If you remember in the last video I reported of Russian successful counterattack here in this area and as time went by more and more sources had acknowledged that fact. Here on this picture you can see exactly how much territory Russians were able to recover in that successful counterattack. From here let's quickly visit Avdeevka city and discuss the situation here. 
As always, the village of Apitne yet again became a contested settlement as Ukrainians restarted their assaults in its directions. Due to its location and the fact that it is located on the other side of this river, it is not convenient for the Russians to sit in and wait, so usually they are on the counterattack here very often. And because of that, the situation here is very fluid and dynamic. I have a pretty unique video of Russians striking this factory near Avdiivka, which Ukrainians are using as a fortress that covers Avdiivka from the north. Whether this is the sign of future Russian offensive in this area or not, time will tell. But in any way, I believe that the video is most interesting and is worth showing to you. Here on the video you can see a massive explosion and a fireball that is rising above the factory and as recent reports suggest there is a massive fire going on in this factory and I would assume that most of the Ukrainian forces were forced to leave due to the heavy smoke and fire. From here let's move to the Bakhmut city and discuss the situation here. First let's touch the southern flank of it. It is important to note that in the last few days there were no territorial changes in this area despite the fact that Ukrainians continuously fight to expand their zone of control near and around recently captured Klishivka and Andrivka. They attacked to the north of Klishivka in attempt to push Russians away from the rail line that they are currently using for constant counterattacks and raids inside Klishivka village and same could be said about Andrivka as well. The close proximity of the rail lines is very inconvenient for the Ukrainian side as Russians are constantly crossing it and contest recently captured. Ukrainians were also attacking in the general direction of villages Azernikivka, Kurdyumivka and Zelenopilia. Of course with recent capture of this portion of the rail line attacks in the direction of those villages are more efficient. However, the Russian defense here held and at this point in time there is no territorial changes coming from this area. Then from here let's visit the northern flank of Bakhmut and as tradition implies Ukrainians continued unsuccessful assaults in the direction of Yagodne and Birhivka as well as in the direction of Dubova Vasilivka. Dubova Vasilivka itself is located on the tactical heights and all throughout last few months Ukrainians were continuously but unsuccessfully were attempting at getting rid of this Russian salient, capture the village of Dubova Vasilivka, which will help them in their future advances in the direction of Birhivka, as well as advance along the E40 highway and capture Zalishnyansky. Despite their hard efforts and resilience, they were unable to make any territorial changes in this area whatsoever. A few days ago, there were reports that Russian VDV forces or Russian paratroopers had successfully stormed and gained full control over Arikhova Vasilivka, but I decided not to report on it because the information information itself was highly speculative. However, after a few days I received more clear information and it would seem that although calling Arikhova Vasilivka Russian capture was premature, the attacks in its direction actually happened. So as a result of successful Russian offensive operations coming from Dubova Vasilivka in the direction of Arikhova Vasilivka, Russians were able to recover this much territory from the Ukrainian side. Then from here let's visit the Kupiansk front and discuss the general situation here. Although Russians haven't advanced much in this area, Russian artillery and aviation were very active on this front. In the last few days, Russians struck several bridges across Osko River, basically isolating this entire front and cutting off supplies to all Ukrainian regiments and brigades located in this area. Here are the videos of that exact action. These are mostly aviation strikes that was carried out by the Russian Air Force and of course we can all acknowledge the high accuracy of those shots. If you remember about a month ago Russians had become extremely active on this front and advanced pretty significantly after which Ukrainians had significantly reinforced this general area, evacuated Kupiansk and started fortifying outskirts of the city to the east side of the Osko River. With bridges destroyed the trap is set and I'm sure with it Russians will continue their offensive operations until they will deplete Ukrainians of all their resources and supply. After which Ukrainians will be either 
destroyed or forced to retreat behind the Asko River. In a way, I'm having a flashbacks of the Ukrainian offensive in the Kherson Oblast, where prior to their counter-offensive, they deliberately striked all the bridges across the Dnipro River, basically isolating Russian forces in this bridgehead, making the defense of Mykolaiv and Kherson highly costly and unnecessary. Costly and highly unnecessary. So perhaps we are going to witness something of that manner on the Kupiansk front. In any way, I am most interested in your opinion on this issue. So please consider commenting and telling me what you think about it. I don't always answer comments, but I do read them. In any way, this is the end of the video. As always, if you liked it and find it informative enough, please consider supporting it by liking, commenting, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribing. Thank you in advance. As always, humanity calls me to condemn all violence against human beings. Have a good day and always remember, Russia will be free and great.